Welcome to Research Business Daily Report, where researchers come for news, insights, and commentary about the research field. Information, knowledge, and bits that will impact them both inside and outside their current place of business. Today, what has held back market industry growth in the past five years, and why a 2.1% average annual growth is being projected for the next five. And then, where Nielsen received its strongest fourth quarter growth, just announced last week. RBDR is sponsored today and this week by Bershik Research and Consulting, unlocking success. Bershik helps executives obtain uniquely rich and accurate market feedback to maximize brands, products, and services so that they can optimize market appeal and adoption. Bershik is going to be hosting a webinar that distinguishes the characteristics most associated with successful customer-centric companies. It's something you're going to want to listen in on. Digit Gap's study of the market research industry just out looks back five years and then it projects industry growth for the next five years. And the study claims that post-recession growth remains slow into 2012 in spite of businesses emerging from extreme cost consciousness and having an interest in developing new products and increased investment targeted on new customers. But what finally jolted research back into a decent growth mold, according to Digit Gaps, was strong gains in R&D investment, which begat expanded product lines and those necessitated extensive launch research. Now the industry is gaining in parallel with the rebounding labor market, and for now, Digit Gap's forecast research revenues will expand 2.1% annually. So the industry will approach, in the United States, $24.3 billion a year by 2022. The study points to obvious focus on media and mobile devices, shifts in consumer patterns and purchasing behavior, plus international expansion that are needed to suit client needs. The more businesses grow their spending and corporate profits, says Digit Gap's uh, study, the more they will invest in research. Now that assumes, and let's hope that there are none of these, but that there are no economic bumps along the way. Next, ordinarily, as you probably know, we leave reports of quarterly financial results to the other research industry media. But as was with the case yesterday with Brain Juicer, we have found some interesting insights in Nielsen's fourth quarter announcements for its 2016 revenues and profits. As many of you probably know, Nielsen is the research industry's global Goliath, but we find it especially interesting as an organization because it has its fingers in almost every area of the research business. And so although its fourth quarter and full year worldwide revenues improved about 2%, and it was far from a sterling report that was released last week, there may be a deeper message that is detectable from Nielsen's business segment reports, which were broken out. They had varying results here and there, and I'm speculating, but I have some confidence that what I'm about to say is probably indicative of the industry's hot and cold spots as far as growth goes. Nielsen said its buy consumer purchase behavior fell 1.3% in the fourth quarter, and was off 0.7% for all of last year. The area known as Watch Media Research rose 5.8% in the fourth quarter and 5.7% for all of 2016. Video and text measurement segments went up 8.4% in the final quarter of last year and was up 7.5% overall for 2016. And market effectiveness jumped 6.4% in 2016's final reporting period, and it leaped 14.3% for the full 12 months of 2016. That's your Research Business Daily Report. We've been sponsored today and will be all this week by Bershik Research and Consulting, Unlocking Success. Bershik helps executives obtain uniquely rich and accurate market feedback to present package, position, price, and market a client's brands, products, and services so they get maximum market appeal and adoption.
Bershik is staging a free February 22nd webinar that spells out keys to customer-centric success. Here is John Bershik with a preview. Nearly every company today says they care about their customers, that they listen, that their ultimate goal is to be customer-centric. Yet who is really doing this? Research tells us that up to 80% of all customer intelligence initiatives fail to meet their objectives. Yet there is one company who actually does this, and their name is Amazon. What makes Amazon so different? From our latest research, Amazon is achieving what we call customer intelligence maturity. In fact, they have earned the right to be called the customer intelligence maturity gold standard. If you want to see more about our newest research on how Amazon is achieving this compared to 26 other leading brands, join our webinar in February called Are You Keeping Up or Falling Short? to learn all about it. That's February 22nd. That's a Wednesday. It's at 10 a.m. Pacific Coast time, 1 o'clock East Coast time, and we'll send out more information if you sign up for that. The link to the webinar for your sign-up is in our subscriber email, and everyone else can check the description box underneath today's video. We hope you have a great research day and that you'll be back here with us tomorrow.